of these drugs from the Western world. It had made its way now all the way over into these remote areas of uh, India. Why? Well, these are reasons cited, better standardization, enhanced potency, ease of administration, widespread availability, and there are also economic interests that are involved. We couldn't leave that out. But has all this really been the blessing that we could hope for? This is, now bear in mind, these statistics are from the mid-90s. And we'll go up to the present, 2009. Okay? 1994, two, over 2 million hospitalized patients had serious adverse drug events. 106,000 persons lost their life. And to give some comparison, some perspective, in the Vietnam War, we lost 57,000 men. And that was over the years of the Vietnam era. And this was one year from drug events that occurred just in the hospitals. Okay. This made the adverse drug events somewhere between the fourth and the sixth leading cause of death in the United States in the mid-1990s. Now that's by human calculation. All right. And that was from the Journal of the American Medical Association that was published 1998. These statistics did not include adverse drug events that weren't reported. And we'll talk about that in a minute, but probably no more than 10% of these events can actually get reported to the FDA. That's, that's the most. Did not include those adverse events that occurred in a physician's clinic or office practice those that did not require hospitalization, those resulting from errors in medication or administration. It wasn't that. It was just related to the drug itself. Are those resulting from the use of over-the-counter drug medications? So you can see that there's still a big gap there. Over-the-counter drugs, this is interesting, 1997, there were about 16,500 Americans that lost their lives from the use of the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. That was USA Today, December 1998. Now notice, that is just one class of over-the-counter drugs. Just one class. 16,500 in one year. And what do our government health agencies have to say about this? This was reported in 1999. About 770,000 injuries and deaths occur each year. Now this is talking about, again, just in hospital patients. Counting, accounting for about $5.6 million per hospital in this country just to take care of the adverse effects that are occurring in the hospital. This estimate doesn't include adverse drug effects causing, causing the admissions, our malpractice, our litigation costs, or the cost of the injuries actually to the patient. This is just caring for those patients in the hospital. <clears throat> National hospital expenses to treat patients who suffer ADEs during hospitalizations are estimated between one and a half and five point six billion dollars annually. Now this was from our own U.S. Department of Health and Human Services Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality, 1999. So you can see that there was an alarm that was going out now that physicians, in fact I remember receiving this bulletin, physicians please monitor your practice more closely because these are the problems you're getting into. What about more recent statistics? Are they any more encouraging, do you think? 2005, now we're up 10 years later. 
The research on adverse drug events and reports project reported adverse drug and device reactions account for as many as 100,000 deaths annually. Again, that's just from what is reported. In general, more than half of the most serious adverse drug reactions have been discovered seven or more years after the drug has been marketed. And that means it just hadn't been given long enough to enough people to be able to detect the problem. Okay? That was from the Journal of the American Medical Association, 2005. 2006, what hath antibiotics wrought? The nightmare of Clostridium difficile enterocolitis. Dr. Gregory Ritecki, Professor of Medicine at Ohio State University in Columbus stated in an article appearing in the 2006 issue of Consultant that with the ever-increasing use of broad-spectrum antibiotics here in the United States, there has been an equally escalating appearance of severe clostridium colitis, which may result in either total colectomy or sepsis and death. It was interesting. I read this article. And shortly thereafter, I was in a church doing a health presentation over the weekend. And there was an elderly lady. We were talking about a few of these issues. She had just lost her husband from this. He was uh, an elderly gentleman who had a urinary tract infection. He went in and was given one of the macrolide antibiotics. I think it was uh, Leviquin or Cipro or something like that. And uh, after a few days, he started to have a little diarrhea. His son was a physician. So mom called the son. Dad is not feeling well. He's got a little tummy upset, starting to have diarrhea. And the physician immediately recognized the potential problem and said, Mom, stop the drug. Well, she called the physician who was in charge to discuss this with him, and he wasn't at that time impressed too much with it. He said, well, let's give it a little time and, and watch and wait. And so they didn't stop the drug then. They continued it for another few days, and he ended up dying as a result of this toxic colitis that had developed. Sounding the voice of alarm, Dr. Rutecki goes on to state that not only are the incidence, severity, and expense of C. difficile infection on the rise, but newer antibiotics used with increasing frequency have created even a more super-resistant clostridium organism. Mm -hmm. At the time of the writing of this article, it was estimated that to treat a patient that developed this colitis, Per patient, it would cost about $10,970, largely the result of the drugs that would have to be used to kill that organism. The resultant health care cost for treating it was estimated here in this country to exceed $1 billion a year, just for that antibiotic problem, associated problem. And so he, he, he recommended the best course of action to take is what? Antibiotic stewardship with restraint. Doctors, don't be so quick just to throw that drug out. Okay. And the ones that were mentioned were those that we talked about, the fluoroquinolones, clindamycin, cephalosporins, or combinations of those. Coming on back up, 2007, Archives of Internal Medicine. Now, these, this is not some pro-herbal group. You see the statistics here that are coming down hard. This is from our own medical professional literature that are commenting upon these incidents of reactions. And they're alarming many. Archives, Internal Medicine, 2007, U.S. Food and Drug Administration has operated this reporting system since 1998. It collects all voluntary reports. It's a nice, it's voluntary to report these adverse drug events submitted directly to the agency or through the drug manufacturers. From 1998 through 2005, in this study time, 
<coughs> they reported serious adverse drug events increased two.